God bless you. Turn around, give a wave offering to each other, just to greet each other in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless. It's good to be here. We've weathered the storms. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome Bishop Emmanuel. Let's give an apostolic welcome to Bishop and also our resident Archbishop Frank Pong, our father in the house. Let's acknowledge him. Let's give an apostolic welcome to him. God bless you. I want to greet people who are watching live stream at home and I pray you'll be blessed this morning as we move onwards. Praise the Lord. You know that we've come through the 24-hour storm on Thursday and Friday and we had an event Thursday evening, I had a friend come from Kent to London to join us at the event. And during the night, he stayed in London. The next day, we were trying to get him back to Kent, and the trains all stopped. You see, you know, life is, we, we take things for granted. We, we take things for granted, yeah? Uh, we need to look beyond that because we're not always in control. We think we're in control of things, but not always the case. So. We see how the world came to a standstill over the last two, three years, now coming to the third year perhaps now with this COVID situation. And we see uh, coming through this, we continually encounter challenges. And that's why it's important to wake up to our spiritual identity because it's through the spirit, through our spiritual, our connection with our maker, our God, who helps us navigate all these lamb, um, uh, uh, challenges that we have in life. Amen. And this is why it's important to come into the Word. So today I want to just encourage you to move forward as we lay some foundations for growth, maturity, and blessing and favor from God. So God bless you. I'm in fact going to start the, me the, the, the message back to front. I want to start at the end of the message and go work back to the front. Amen. We're, we're working through Hebrew today, not the... English, we read from left to right. Now we're going to read from right to left. Start from the ending. Just want to lay a few verses down and just get you into the spirit of what the message is about this morning. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 33, which I want to lay as a foundation, even if it's at the end, we're going to put it at the beginning. He who is last will be first, and he will be first is last. It says, Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. This was after an event took place. If you know the narrative, if you know the Gospel of Matthew, it was after the disciples went through a storm and Jesus calmed the storm, calmed the wind, and the wind ceased. They confess and acknowledge him to be the Son of God. After the fact, they acknowledge who Jesus is. Now, I want to just compare and contrast with some other references in the Scripture about how the, how the people perceived Jesus and their response to Jesus before he did anything for them. And this is I'm going to take from Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. And I want to look at another verse. I want to come back, start working backwards to the front of the message. Okay? And so Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 reads as follows. I want you to remember what we're saying, what I'm sharing. If you're not, if you, you've missed it, over, overlook it, go back and watch it live on the, on the archives on the, on the website. When he can, had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Okay? And then verse... Two said this, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So we see the disciples, they acknowledge him after the fact, after the event, he calms the storm, they acknowledge him, you are the son of, he is the son of God, and they worship him. This leper, as Jesus comes down the mountain, the multitudes follow him, but he comes, approaches Jesus, which he shouldn't have, because legally, the, from the Jewish legal system, he couldn't approach the Lord. Otherwise, he'd render him unclean. If Christ would have touched him, he would have had to go for a ritualistic cleaning. He I says to me, he, the first thing he does is he worships him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He hadn't done anything for him, but he worshipped him. The next verse I want to look at is again from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 18. And the, the reason I'm using the, the Gospel of Matthew to make the message, to share the message and expound upon this, is because I'm looking at the identity of who Jesus is. And because the Gospel of Matthew was written for the Jewish community, as opposed to the Gospel of Mark, Luke, and John, or, or Mark, 
and, and Luke were written for the, the Roman community and so forth, but, where, but whereas the Gospel of Matthew was purely for the Jewish community. Amen? Even though we included in that, it was directed to them because of their background, their reference to the Old Testament. Okay? Try and make it clearer. While he, was, while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, a ruler, a member of the Sanhedrin, of the community of the Jewish people came. The first thing he did, he worshipped him, saying, my daughter has, died, has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. So before Jesus did anything, went to Jairus' house, he, Jairus worshipped Jesus. He was a man in authority. He had the status in the community, but the first thing he did was worship this, to them, uneducated, illiterate Jewish boy, man. I just want, I want to get, I want to set the time, set the backdrop. Let's wake up, we're just waking up this morning, yeah? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, want to, I want to just delve a slightly deeper into it, because we want God to do something for us, then we'll say thank you. We want people to do things for us before we appreciate them. The nature of the word of God, God, the character of God, is that we, we re, in spite and not because, we respect in spite and not because, we love in spite and not because, we appreciate in spite and not because, we don't expect something, we just love because that who's, that's who we are. Interestingly, the disciples who should have been the ones that were with him on the journey, continually worshipping and acknowledge him before he did anything for them, was something about the presence of Jesus that impacted people's lives. Yet they were, it was after the, after the event, after the miracle, that they worshipped him. Whereas the leper, who was outcast, who was quarantined, who was isolated, who was sent out of the community, the first thing he does before Jesus heals him, he worships him. We want God to act, then we're going to worship. If you do this for me, then I'll appreciate you. Is that the mindset we have? I pray it's not in ACC and people watching a live stream. Praise, but I want to show you something important, what, he's shown, what it reveals about the identity of Jesus before I go back to the beginning of the message. The Greek word that's used here for worship is a Greek word called proskinesis, okay? Let me go back to my first reading, um, uh, Matthew 14, verse 33, and show you what, what's really happening here, what's taking place here. Uh, uh, 14, 33, it says this, And those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. What they offered to him was something, you, according to the New Testament, is only directed to God. The Greek, Greek word here, Ide en doplio, those in the bowl, elthondes, proskinisan after legontes, alithos theo you, you, yours e, e. You are truly, they were proskinisas in the proskinisan means to prostrate, to all, surrender all to him and acknowledge him as being the son of, as being God incarnate. That's the implication. That's what comes out this verse, this passage. They worshipped him. The same thing happens with, with uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. The leper worshipped him. And the way the, the, the practice of worship, the way they would have worshipped in that period at that time was prostrate themselves, abase themselves before the object of what they were worshipping. Yeah? It says, and the leper, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, worship him. He fully surrendered to him. The same thing the ruler did, directed to Jesus. He worshipped him, fully surrendered to him. In, Ma in Matthew 9, verse 18, yeah? He completely surrendered to him. While he spoke these things to them, behold, the ruler came and worshipped him. The Greek word is proskinesis. But when you read in the translations, because people argue the identity of who Jesus is, the actions directed to Jesus reveal who he is, let alone the words. People want words to say Jesus is God, but the actions, the act that are included in the Bible and not excluded reveal the identity of Jesus, that he is God incarnate. Because this practice, this act was only directed purely, exclusively toward God. And I'll qualify this very, I'll qualify this in the next few moments. That's why I said we start from the beginning, because we're going to go to the beginning of the gospel, because we want to worship and praise him. Because in that process, uh, doors open, blessings flow. 
power is released. Yeah? Darkness is dispersed. Uh, yeah? And, and we, wanna, we want that. You want to be blessed. You want to leave here blessed. You don't just want to hear my, the sound of my voice this morning. <laughs> didn't just come just to, to look at me. You came to be enriched and blessed by the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Because in the Greek language, there are many Greek words that mean to a type of respect, worship, that are translated in the English New Testament with the same word, worship. So you don't know how to dif differentiate what they mean, what these, what, uh, what really what it's all about. That's why it gets confused in translation, you're lost in translation, because the people don't really know when we say worship God, it might be a bit of respect to God, it might be a bit of obeisance, it might be whatever it might be. And I would just qualify this. If we look in Acts chapter 7, verse 42, now the ones who don't know the Greek, well, if you don't know the Greek and you don't do your research, you may not get this, but anyway, I'm, I, wanna, I wanna share it with you. Then God turned, uh, this is um, Acts chapter 7, verse 42. Then God turned and gave them to up to the, Worship the host of heaven. Then God turned and gave them to worship the host of heaven. It's the same word that was used with the leper. It's the same word that was used with the disciples. It's the same word that's used with Jairus. But the Greek word is completely different to the same word and same act that was directed to Jesus. The Greek word here for worship is latrevo. Gave them up to latrevo. It's completely different to the act that Jairus, the leper, and the disciples directed towards Jesus. Okay? Okay? All right. Let me, let me go to another word very quickly. Let's go back to Acts 17, verse 23. Okay? So Acts chapter 17, verse 23. For as I was passing through and considered the objects of your worship... I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. Okay? The Greek word is completely different. The Greek word used here for worship is sevasman or sevume, which is a type of honor, respect. It's not a full surrender to the object of your worship. Okay? It's the same English word, and both there's the, these two he, um, words for worship in English are completely different in the Greek, and they're not the word proskinesis, okay? Now, how do we know that the word proskinesis is only directed toward God and not to any, no one else? And I quali I'll qualify this for you. When Cornelius came to Peter... And he bowed down to worship him like you would worship God because he thought it was a type of God. Watch this. Jesus forbade, uh, Peter forbade him from worshipping him. That type of respect and worship towards him. And I'll qualify this in Acts chapter 10 verse 25 and 26. This is a theological lesson by the way and you can go back and reflect on it. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him, proskinesed him. Peter responded by saying this in verse 26. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up, I myself am also a man like you, I'm also a man. So I cannot accept that because that what you're doing is only exclusively directed to God. The angel now, in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, John bowed down to worship the angel. Watch this. And I, and, and I fell at his feet to worship him. This is the angel. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. And you have uh, brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship the same proskinesi God. So what did he say about Jesus? Jesus did not, did not reject it. The Magi came, worshipped him. The leper came, worshipped him. He didn't forbid them. He didn't refuse it. He let them worship him because he knew his identity. It wasn't a violation of the word of God. He was honouring God. Praise the Lord. Let's come back to the beginning of this chapter. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. The point I'm making is that before we do what we do, we begin our morning with praising and worshiping God, surrendering to Him. We end our day by surrendering to Him, and He fills in the gaps. He makes the way where there is no way. Praise God. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 reads as follows Immediately, Jesus made His disciples get into the boat 
and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said, to, and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. When Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why, why did you Doubt. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. Praise. Let's take a little journey. Just draw the significant spiritual lessons for us today from this passage. Praise God. Following Jesus does not mean that life will be without challenges. The reason they were in the boat and in the storm was because they followed Jesus. But Jesus always has a way for us. In midst of any challenge, adversity we have, he'll always make a way where there's no way. He'll always come at the right time to meet us at the place of our need. He teaches us to trust him in spite and not because. Irrespective of what's happening, we had the storms the past few days. In spite of what's happening, we've had the COVID the past few years. We've had all these challenges and we're looking, we're looking ahead to conflicts in the world. Perhaps if, if the politics doesn't intervene, if dialogue doesn't work, then it's going to be conflict. So we need to trust God. We cannot trust men. But sometimes the Lord takes you down paths that seem on the off. Firstly, first impressions seem that they're, they're not pleasant. It's challenging. It's, 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 not, it's not safe. But ultimately, if God's taking you there, he's going to get you through wherever, wherever he's taking you. Yeah? We discover not only Jesus, not only the disciples are following him, he takes them into harm's way to them, seemingly harm's way. The fact is that when they get into the boat, they don't get in the boat by choice. The Greek word is, let me just go to, let me just read, the, let me just read um, verse 22, back to verse 22. It says, immediately Jesus made, he says, Geephthels inangisen. The word, the Greek word inangisen means he forced them into the boat. He didn't, it wasn't a choice. They got into it because he, he made them get in the boat. Because he says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. If you deny yourself and you accept him, meaning he has rights over you because you've denied your will. It's no longer your will, it's his. So not my will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So then you're subject, you're at his mercy. Where he leads you, you have to follow him because you don't belong to yourself anymore. He'll take you to places you may not want to go. You know your holiday brochures? Just throw them away. <laughs> so he makes them get into the boat. And not only does he make them get in the boat, he doesn't get in the boat with them. He pushes them into the, the and coming into the storm. He goes into a safe haven. Stability climbs the mountain on his own. He's watching from there and seeing what they're doing because he's training them. It's a training process. He's the great coach of coaches. He's the Lord of Lords. And he's sending them to train them to build their, their resolve, their resolve yes. to strengthen them, praise God. Amen. They're in the boat. He's on the mountain. He has insult to injury by frightening him at the same time. Not only are they encountering a storm, they're seeing some shadow Traveling, moving like a phantom over the waters. <laughs> Traumatizing them at the same time. And that's sometimes God is trying, that's sometimes we encounter these type of things. And we need to just trust the process. Praise the Lord. They're on the sea of uncertainty. 
is a representation of the world. Your life sometimes uncertain. There was so much uncertainty the past few days, past few years. We don't know what was going to happen. The government doesn't know what was going to happen. But I tell you, God knows the end before the beginning. That's why I began with the end before the beginning. To show at the end all things work out for the good to those who love God who are called according to his divine purposes. Yeah. He doesn't come on the first watch. He comes on the fourth watch. Now, verse 25, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. The fourth watch. He could have gone on the first watch. He could have gone on the second. He could have gone on the third. But he came on the fourth watch. What watch is Christ entering your scenario, your situation? Take courage, be still, and know that he's God. He still arrived. You know, fourth watch. Jesus came on the fourth day when Lazarus died. It was four days after he had died, he had come. He didn't come immediately. Because God has a plan. He comes at the right time that he's coming will have the greatest impact in the situation. That we will not take him for granted. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, at the fourth watch, God comes on time. They see him as a shadow, as a ghost. And it validates the fact that there is spiritual entities floating and roaming around the world. There is spiritual dimensions around us. It doesn't negate it. The fact it uses the word ghost, the phantom. It means that there are things around that we, we're not fully always understanding them or acknowledging them. But the things moving around that people neglect and reject and don't acknowledge. Because we're living in a techno technological world. We think we're in control. But we're, comp we're, we're at the mercy of the elements around us sometimes. I wish I was speaking to someone. I'm, I'm trying to decode it for us. The fourth watch was just before the break of dawn. It was the, the close, it was, it was between the, 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 the sixth and the ninth hour of the early morning. And, and it's the time when the sun rises. It's sunrise, so 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning is the time of the sun, when the sun is beginning to break through to, to rise. And we know that the Lord always comes on time. The psalmist tells us this in Psalm 46, verse 5. He says, he says this, God is in the midst of her. She should not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Take courage. If people are watching, if you're going for whatever struggles you're going, take courage because God's going to have the breakthrough for you at the break of dawn. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and it's fitting that Jesus comes at the break of dawn, at the sunrise, because one of Jesus' titles is Anatoli. The word Anatoli means sunrise or the east. And the sun rises from the east and sets in the west. And in fact, Luke declares this in Luke chapter 1 verse 78. It says this. And this is why it's good if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're Bible students, go to the primary languages. Translations are wonderful. But you need to not salvation, you don't need to know the Greek to be saved. You don't need to know the Hebrew to be saved. You don't need to know Aramaic to be saved. But it's good to, it, it helps edify you and build you up more in your faith, establishing your faith to know the primary languages. Because the translations don't always clearly convey what's meant in the original. Now, now in Luke chapter 1 verse 17 it says this, Through the tender mercies of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. Okay, in verse seven, uh, seven. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow uh, and the shadow to guide our feet into the way of peace. And that's why Christ has come. To disperse the darkness, to shed light in our path, to give us peace. That not the peace of the world. Paul says, beware when they say uh, peace and safety because then sudden destruction comes. It's the peace of heaven we want, the peace of God. But verse 78 says this. It says this. Let's go back to 78. Through the tender mercies of our God, with which the day spring, the word day spring is, the Greek is anatoli, which means dawn, which means sunrise. It should say, which the sunrise from on high has visited us, or which the dawn from on high has visited us. That might have made it slightly maybe more clear than the day spring. People are not sure what that day spring perhaps may mean. So that's what's up. So it's fitting that Christ comes at the dawn, at the break of dawn, because he is the sunrise. So there's got to be a dawn in your life that the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So it was very early, and that's why we, 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 we read that in when Jesus rose from the grave, the tomb, it was very early in the morning. Because that's his nature, to keep rising very early in the morning. And despite what time of day is, when Christ comes into your life, let me tell you, that moment that Christ enters your life is dawn. That's the sunrise. Things change. When he comes in your life, things change. Transformation takes place, and it begins from within. Others may not be uh, privy to that experience, but you will, be, you, will, you will enjoy that experience where God is central to your life. Praise God. Amen. And this is why we're told that um, Mark chapter 16, verse 2, it says, Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. The sun did rise. It had risen because he wasn't there. The tomb was empty. The sun, there's two suns here. The physical sun and the sun of righteousness. Yeah? With healing. He had risen in parallel to the physical sun. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we're told, Psalm 84 verse 11 tells us, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Yeah? Psalm 84 verse 11. But praise God for the dawn. Take courage anyone who's going through whatever you're going challenge struggle whatever you're going take courage because he breaks through dawn comes when God enters the scene of your lives dawn comes praise God Psalm 30 verse 5 says this for his anger is but for a moment his favor is for life weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the sunrise praise God morning fourth watch I don't know what time period your life you're going through at this moment what, what challenges but i can tell you dawn either he's here or he's coming i pray dawn is already here for for all of us praise the lord amen so it's important to let him mani allow him to manifest his life in your lives hallelujah and the first thing jesus does to respond to their fear he says, do not be, he says to them, Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. So when that dawn comes, whatever emotion of fear we have, uncertainty, anxiety, Jesus himself can resolve that. Yeah? Why? Fear, fear will be dispersed. Why? Because perfect love casts out fear. And when Christ comes into our lives, his perfection will comfort console encourage us yeah and you're just giving permission to enter don't, don't be like those close him out let him enter your lives open the door from within and let him enter your life and be establishing you praise the lord hallelujah and so uh the disciples observing this peter wanted to confirm this is jesus ask him allow me command me give me permission to come to you on the water to walk on the water and jesus permitted him now, he says, uh, Peter says, if it is you, command me to come to you. If it is you. Yes, it was Jesus, but it was you, Peter. I pray you get this when you get home. It was Pete, Jesus. Yes, Jesus can walk on water. The question is, can Peter walk on water? He gave him permission to walk on water. On water. But can Peter walk on water in his disposition, in his might, says, with his limitations and his blockages? So he said, he permitted him to walk on the water. If it is you, yes, it is him, but it's Peter. And we need to change because if it is you, you can do nothing. I remember a story, uh, a story uh, St. Augustine, he had many mistresses. And when his life changed, he gave everything up. His life transformed. And one day he was walking down a path and one of his only, his mistresses saw him across the, part, across the road and says, and says, Augustine, Augustine, it is I. And he says, but it is not I. <laughs> it is Christ. <laughs> yes. If it's Peter, we can't do it. We're limited. If it is us, if it is I, I cannot do anything. It's, it's what God is doing through me that allows me to transcend the storms, the tempest of the world. You know, you know, to, to, to walk in on water, you've got to change to walk on water. You want to be water walkers, you need to change. Uh, you need to let Christ embody you. 
You need to speak like him. You need to walk like him. You need to act like him. You need to behave like him. Then you're going to walk on water. But if you're acting the way you are acting, forget it's a non-event. You're going to get out. You're going to just get soaked. It's his eye. That's why Paul says, Paul learned the lesson. He said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we need to change from within. Peter couldn't walk on the water because of his baggage, because he was, he'll be distracted very easily, distracted. That's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, praise God. Yeah? The anointing changes everything. And I brought a little, a little I, I love my object lessons. Let me give you a little lesson here very quickly. See here we've got the oil, olive oil, we've got the water. Christ is called the Messiah, the Christ. The Messiah, the meaning of Messiah is the anointed one. And the way they anointed and consecrated the prophets, kings, and priests in the Old Testament was with oil. They put oil and it was a symbol of the presence of the Holy Spirit, of God's approval. And it wasn't just anyone putting oil on you. It was the God's designated people, the people authority like Samuel, the different prophets were able to anoint kings, priests, and, and prophets. They had the authority to do that directly from God. And so, but we see something, we see, we see one example here. If you, this is the water, so Christ is the anointed one, and he's walking on water. And, it's, and it's scientifically, that's the way it works. Because if you put oil on, it, on water, if we put the oil on the water, watch this. The oil cannot sink. The anointing cannot sink. Yeah? So if Christ is the anointed one, symbolizing the, the cons chrismation, consecration of the spirit, he couldn't sing. It's, it's scientifically he couldn't sing. It's not natural for, for Jesus to sing because he's anointed. And when you share that anointing, it's impossible for you to sink. You'll always rise above adversity. You'll always rise above challenges. You may be shaken. You may be turned upside down, you may be stirred, but at the end, at the end, you're going to rise. Peter has, did not come into that experience, into that power, consecrated power, to be able to have this, this reality, spiritual reality. Look at that, rise. So whatever they shake you, whatever they do, you are going to naturally rise because of the anointing. The anointing will break the yoke. It was impossible for Jesus to sink because he's the anointed. The same way that perfect love cast out fear. When you have Christ, fear has to flee. It cannot cohabit the presence of Jesus Christ. So if we have some anxiety and fears, we need to allow him more in our lives. More of him and less of us. I must decrease, he must increase. And that's where the power is. That's where my breakthrough comes. That's where my progress comes. When he's more established in my life, there's nothing to fear. It transcends everything. It always brings me up. It will bring you up. Hallelujah. I praise him speaking to someone. That's why Paul says, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So Peter, Jesus says, yes, come, permits him to come to him on the water. Peter gets off the boat, starts to tread on the water, looking, trying to look toward Jesus. But what does he do? Peter does something that, that is detrimental to his safety and well-being. What does he do? We're told this in verse 30. But when he saw that the wind was boy, when he saw, he, was, he began to look at the wrong things. But when he saw... The things you look at can bring problems to you, can create problems. What you're looking at can create problems. We need to look at the right things. The, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says this, looking unto Jesus. Okay, looking. The Greek word here, to, to looking, is aphorao. The word aphorao means just take... Stop looking at other things, okay, or anything else. Do not look at anything else, 
but fixate your sight on one particular thing, on Christ. At the exclusion of everything else. So we come into this room, if we want to focus on the altar, we, we, we turn away from everything else and we look just at the altar and not get distracted. Peter was distracted by the wind, by the waves, by what was happening around him and he took his focus off the Lord. And what the, what the lesson from here is to keep your, keep your sight focused on the Lord. That's why Psalm 119 verse 37 says this, Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. You know, that's our, that's our, that should be our prayer to the Lord, continue to be focused on him. So when he saw the wind and the waves, he heard the wind and the waves, he began to become fearful. But it's an encouraging passage, this, because the outcome is his safety and well-being. Because when Jesus is at hand, he can change everything. All you need to do is cry to the Lord. He was, he was sinking. Notice what he does, because the ship represents the world, or even represents the church. Now he begins to sink. I want you to take, take note of this, very important. If you leave anything, maybe leave with this little thought. Food for thought, seed. For you to go and meditate on. He began to sink. And uh, in verse 30, let's just go to But when he saw that the wind was blowing, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. I want you to think about that just for a moment. Just let's pause for a moment. He began to sing and he said, Lord, save me. Now, around him was not only Jesus. It was his fellow disciples in the boat. We're in a church and we're a congregation. We gather together. When we go for an adversity or challenge, we often talk to everyone around at the exclusion of God. But what Peter does, he says, Lord, directed it to the Lord himself. And we need to learn that when we go for a ch challenge, uh, an adversity, a struggle, we, can, we need to petition God. Even though there are many people around us, the only one can have a real true impact and help us through our situation. Is no one physical, it's God's in the spirit can intervene in our situation. Oh. We often talk into Sue, if anyone by the name of Sue, please, it's not to do with you. <laughs> Peter, John, Robin, Andrew, we're talking to him, but we're not saying, Lord, help me. Yeah, this is, prof this is, prof this is, prof please. The boat, sorry, the disciples, they were in a more seemingly physically advantaged position than someone standing on the water to help them. They could have thrown a life, with those life rings out, they could have rocked threw a rope out to pull him back in but he didn't call uh, uh, he didn't say Andrew he didn't say John he didn't say James he said Lord they said disciples I'm sinking he said Lord and when we're sinking in life in the challenges of life and adversities of life cry out to the Lord When the Israelites went through their adversities and they rebelled against God and God allowed them to be put into slavery and to bondage, the outcome was when they called to the Lord, he intervened and helped them. They cried to, he said, cried to the Lord, he says. Psalm 107 verse 12 says this. I just want to read this very quickly. We'll be finished shortly. Therefore he brought them down, he brought them, therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. There's no one can help us. If you're in your situation, only God can intervene at that 12th, one minute to the 12th hour to help you in your plight, in your situation. Verse 13. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble. They learn who to cry to. Sometimes you go through different experience events and we go to the wrong people, we go to the wrong source and things like that. But then we learn where, the direction, who to cry to. And he saved them out of their distress. He saved them. And verse 14 says this. He brought them out of, the, out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Verse 15. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and, his, and for his wond wonderful works to the children of men. Stop there. He says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord. These disciples gave thanks to the Lord after 
he calmed after he took uh, Peter out the out the sea, put him into the boat. The wind ceased, and then they worshipped him. The lepr- the man of with leprosy worshipped him before he calmed the storm of his life. What category of people do we come under? The ones we expect expectation. We got this um, this mindset. Uh, that we we want it first and if we we get what we want we're going to appreciate it what kind of attitude do you have praise God and Jesus responded I'm going to conclude with these last few thoughts Jesus concluded by saying to them he says oh you of little faith why did you doubt he said to uh, he said to to Peter oh you of little faith why did you doubt the implication is there is power in faith So today I want to encourage you, church, activate your faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you want to become a friend of God, believe God. Believe, take his word, and you will qualify to be a friend of God. You'll be like Abraham, who believed God, and it was accounted as righteousness unto him, and he was called a friend of God. Believe God, and you'll become a friend of God. What best friend would you like to have? Someone sticks closer than a brother. A friend who sticks closer than a brother. That's Jesus, praise God. So activate your faith. How do you activate your faith? Well, Romans gives us a clue, gives us a direction. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us this. So then faith comes. Let's read this together, actually, so you can really internalize it. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's read it again. So f- then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What are you doing by putting yourselves in this environment today is you're helping your faith to be activated, to be strengthened, to be increased, to grow by hearing and in- internalizing the word of God brings you empowerment, empowers you, praise God. Faith brings down giants. Yeah? Yeah? And it's faith that we walk helps us walk on water with the anointing. With the faith, we walk on the water. Praise God! So, allow the Lord to intervene in your lives, to lead you and to guide you. Even though sometimes you'll be in places you don't know, how did I end up here? Trust the trust God's system, God's process, and it'll get you. If it got you there, it'll get you through to the end. Praise God! Make it priority today to build your faith. Make a priority. Say, you know, I want to increase my faith today more and more and help other people increase their faith through the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's rise together. Praise the Lord. Be the anointing. No one can keep you down. Newton's law, what goes up must come down. The law of God, what goes down must come up. Look, Newton didn't get this one. Praise the Lord. Let praise them. Praise him. Praise him. Come to the. Hallelujah. There's a lot of food for thought for you today. So you, you've got a lot of homework to do. I'd like to ask His Eminence, Archbishop, and Bishop Emmanuel to come up and join me. Come on, come and join me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Your Eminence, would you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a powerful message. Put your hand together and thank God for the message. Hallelujah. It's good to try the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer him for our faith. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry. Oh, because, because we, we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? 
As we try as in that trouble in the heaven. We should never be discouraged. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? And we have a friend so faithful. Who will all our sorrows say? Who will all our troubles Every weakness. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, the Shanama woman who lost her only child, she even kept it without telling the husband. She did something in the beginning. He said to the husband, Can we prepare a place for the prophet? We have seen the prophet passing by. She brought the light into the house. And God blessed her, a son. But when the son died, she did not even say, say anything to the husband. Sometimes we talk too much without talking to God, as the eminence, your eminence says. He confined only in Jesus. He went. She made a way to the prophet. And when the prophet saw her coming, she, he asked Gehazi, go and ask the woman, is everything okay? He had never been the presence of God in Bethel, but he, she said to the Gehazi, everything is okay. It is well with the Lord. When peace like a river. Somebody who has lost her only child, she just wants to be at the presence of the Lord to experience the power of Christ. And the same thing today. Everybody have to make arrangement to look to the expectation of the fourth watch. You know the leprous, they were already cast out from the city of Samaria. But when in their twilight in the fourth watch, they say let us make a way. Let us make a decision. If we are here, we are going to die. But let us move forward. Today the message has come. What do we do have to do? Move forward. Because Christ is still the head of the government. He is in control. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And I challenge you today that the message has come. Make a place for the message to be in your heart. To the community where you are going, be a light. Because when you have a friend like Jesus, you are a light. We thank God for Tottenham. They were able to beat Manchester City yesterday. Though because we will be rushing today, no. Today we are last. When we thank God, God is in control. And be blessed. And look unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 says, Every weight, we, we have a great cloud of witnesses. But the weights, sometimes we are carrying some weights. Can weights. This morning I was coming, somebody sent me a message and I will, I will, I will send it to you about something, uh, a minister was minister about Ghana. He's not a Ghanaian, but he had been living in Ghana and I was so certain that Ghana has gone back for 25 years because God was there. But now the pastors and the prophets have turned the nation to prophecies of righteousness and everything. And God is getting away from that we want a message to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And today I challenge you wherever you are, there's, there's no any friend than Jesus. Let's stick to him. Because everything shall pass away, but his word shall never pass. May God richly bless you wherever you are. Amen. God bless you, Your Eminence. Bishop, how have you been? How's your ministry going? Mm -hmm. Use the microphone. Yes, God, this is our Bishop Emmanuel. God bless. Would you pray for the communion? Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have your communion cups, take them. Be ready. Heavenly Father, this afternoon, we thank you for such an opportunity. 
to come before you to communion with you, Lord. We pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that your spirit and your power will fall upon today's communion, Lord. And I pray whoever is sick among us as they partake in this communion, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I pray for divine healing. Mm. I pray for your power to rest upon them. I pray for those that need deliverance to be delivered. Those that they need healing should be healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That they will never leave here the way they came, but they will leave here with testimonies and power and grace. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You take your cups. We do this in a worthy manner. We thank the Lord for what he's done for us. We take the body and blood. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Please take your seats and I'll give back to the worship praise team. Before actually we go down, we're just going to consecrate this oil. We'll pray for the oil. I'm speaking about the oil, yes. Father, we thank God for this oil. We pray for your blessing upon this oil. Is that anyone who uses this oil will receive a breakthrough in their lives. We thank God that they will sail through oceans and they will climb every mountain and reach the promised land of their life. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name. Thank God. The significance of the all, as we say, is the consecration, power, and presence, and point of contact with God. Yes, in Jesus' Lord. name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's give the Lord a clap. Roy. Thank you so much for the word today. Let's stand, and as we conclude, I'm going to ask Tom to sing, I am a friend of God. Reminds me, as Bishop ended with, the, with Abraham. He was the friend of God and the father of the faithful. So let's be faith-filled this week. Whatever we face, whatever storms, whatever happens, let's have our eyes fixed on Jesus. God bless you. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
with each one of us now and forevermore. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us through the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 Let's just do the clap offering and we'll see you next week. God bless you.